fellow is. He's punky, punkin, happy, punkin, happy all the day. And his great big smile will chase your cares away. Chase them away, away. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another spooky, frightful episode of the Every Day is Halloween podcast. As always, I'm your host, Horror Guy Keenan, here to bring you the Halloween episode of 2019. Are you excited? Because I'm freaking excited. Uh, it's been a while. I know. I am very sorry for the lateness. Uh, my full-time podcasting gig went under, so I am unemployed at the moment. So life has been a tad hectic, and I've been living off my jack-o'-lanterns on the Etsy page. Uh, if you are interested in checking out some awesome Etsy page uh, jack-o'-lanterns, ones that flicker and glow in the dark, and ones that hang on your Christmas trees, uh, give yourself a little bit of Halloween feel throughout the, the Christmas season. That's Etsy.com backslash shop backslash Hallow's Eve. Three six five. Uh, I do all the the work. The pumpkins are all original, hand painted, hand crafted, hand sculpted by me. Uh, I'd love if you guys check this out. Um, I've also started a Patreon. That's patreon.com backslash horror guy, all one word. Uh, and there you'll get one extra podcast uh, that's not aired anywhere else, not through iTunes, not through Google Play, specifically through. Uh, Patreon, and that's an exclusive one where I'll be doing interviews uh, and, and just kind of bringing creative people in and just talking a little bit more about uh, just the stuff that uh, I'm into and I'm trying to share with the world of artists and things. But the Everyday is Halloween podcast will always be free. Do not worry about that. You will still get episodes one a month. Uh, and yeah, it, it, it'll still be everything that you hope for and dream, except you'll be getting one every single month <laughs> since things have been a little strange. So with that said, let's go to some music real quick. And when we get back, we'll run down some news.
was 13 Jack-O-Lanterns by Murderland off the album Lights Out. That was one of my early horror punk favorites from the early 2000s. also want to give a big shout out to Trap Samurai for the uh, Halloween mix and bass earlier on heard on the show. Uh, really good stuff. Do we have any Hocus Pocus fans out there? Because there looks like there might be a Hocus Pocus 2 on the way. Uh, I read the Hocus Pocus sequel uh, that came out, I think, about a year ago, which is a pretty decent book, and I'm wondering if they're going to adapt that book into a movie. But it looks like Jen D'Angelo, who was a writer on Workaholics, has gotten tied to write and create Hocus Pocus 2 for the Disney Plus streaming service coming out next month. Um, it looks to bring back Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, Kathy Mee Jammy. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, Bette Midler, I heard they were talking about making a sequel to Hocus Pocus a while back, and it was going to be like a made-for-TV thing real quick, and Bette Midler came out and said, oh, it's going to be really cheap, I guarantee it, and Disney just kind of halted all <laughs> things, you know, it's like, well, if the main uh, witch says it's going to be really crappy, maybe we should probably hold off and uh, rework this a little bit, so uh, I hope we get to see Doug Jones back and a few others, so that would be really fun. Hey everybody, have you heard the news that Joe Bob is back in town? That's a little ditty from the intro. Uh, Joe Bob Briggs' last drive-in exclusively on Shudder. Uh, it's been one of my highlights of the last year. And uh, they've been knocking out of the park every single one. Joe Bob was my horror host. I was an Elvira guy. I was a fan, Ghoulie fan. But Joe Bob was one of those ones that was on all the time on TNT with the, his drive-in, uh, the movie channel. Uh, and now, Shudder, which is really cool. I just watched the Halloween one where you get here at Halloween Halloween 4 and Halloween 5. Sadly, no Halloween 3. Sorry, Darcy. Uh, <laughs> but we're getting a Joe Bob's Red Christmas, which is going to look at a lot of Canadian or Christmas films, which will let you kind of stir around the gray matter of what that it might actually be. That'll be Friday the 13th of December, so check that out on Shudder. How many of you are fans of the toys that made us on Netflix? I know I am. That was probably one of my favorite things from last year as well, was just going through uh, all the toys that really kind of resonated with me as a kid. Well, it looks like Netflix is bringing it back, not only for another season, but they're also starting the movies that made us. That's right. This year, we're going to get the movies that made us um, sometime in November, December. Uh, looks like it's going to be Ghostbusters, Ghost, Die Hard. In Home Alone. So that should be a lot of fun. Keep an eye out for that. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark has returned to theaters and it's going from now until Halloween. So try and look up your local listings for the next couple days. You might get in a Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark screening. Maybe even one on Halloween night, which is pretty cool. I think it's awesome that this movie has stayed in theaters for as long as it has. Uh, being a very subpar um, horror movie, but a horror movie that a lot of people can see from teens to kids to families to adults. It kind of resonates with a lot of people. I'm sure this movie will get a sequel and we'll get more of the scary stories in there. This one just kind of told on a few of them. I didn't really get a chance to talk about it on the show. I wasn't a huge fan uh, of Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark because of all the CG added to the prosthetics and practical effects, but the movie itself, uh, even though it ran a little long, being a tad wordy and quiet, um, still has kind of that 80s, 60s, 70s, uh, Stranger Things kids ch looking for spooky stuff atmosphere. And I always appreciate that, but it was not one of my favorites. Uh, but hey, maybe I'll try it again in the next couple of days. Trick or Treat is kind of shaky on the horizons, uh, coming out with a sequel, Trick or Treat 2. Even though two years ago we did get a whole thing where Mike Daughtery sat in a theater with a bunch of people and he was announcing uh, Godzilla destroy all monsters and people were really excited with him working with legendary and then they showed off a little teaser picture of trick-or-treat 2 with sam and the entire theater erupted in applause and everybody was super excited to see the return of sam in the trick-or-treat franchise uh well it's been about 10 years since the original film came out and now we have all these sam bookmarks and light up statues and suckers and toys and spirit stores just making them money off them the hand and foot and uh, so Mike uh, got in contact with somebody over at comicbook.com and he had this to say. Oh man, it's the time of the year. I feel like it's become that tradition. Ask Mike about Trick or Treat too. Haha. <laughs> Listen, I'm intrigued by the idea and it's completely up to legendary. It's been a few years since we initially talked about it and there's been regime change uh, since then. Uh, they still have the property and they still love it and there's still a long line of merchandise and a continuing line of comic books based on the film but the ball is in their court. The moment they say they're interested and ready to go, we'll see if the stars align. Uh, which is kind of crazy because I felt like it was a whole thing where Mike was going to work on Trick or Treat 2 right after Godzilla, which would be right now, 
but it's one of those things where it's the hype machine, guys. That I mean, that we're reading this from the internet. This podcast is from the internet. It, 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 this is what it's all about now. It's about hyping people up to really want to get on board for the next film. Uh, Brandon Small is doing that right now with Death Clock. Uh, they are having a live uh, concert about Death Clock. Uh, you know, but it has nothing to do with Death Clock coming back or Metalocalypse for that matter. Uh, but he's going on social media being like, well, Adult Swim, they don't know what they're going to do. So it's up to the fans to uproar and say they want Death Clock. It's up to the fans to uproar and say they, they want Trick or Treat. These, these creators and directors and writers, they're just kind of poking the social media bear. That's what this whole <sighs> shitty social media world is these days. And Mike even has this to say. At the same time, I think there's something to be said about not sequelizing it. In a business that's obsessed with franchising and spinoffs and sequels and sequels, maybe there's something to be said about just leaving it alone. I agree. I do agree that it is very nice when a movie comes out and just does one movie like The Gate. One and done, there's no shitty sequel, it's just remembered as a really good film. Ghostbusters could have been a really good film. I mean, it is a good film. But they made a sequel that people hated. I love both of them, but it's whatever. And that's the thing. You're going to find people out there that also like the sequels as well. I think that last comment by Mike is bullcrap. Trick or Treat lends itself to being a franchised uh, series, kind of like Creepshow. Sure, the other Creepshows aren't as good as the first, but, which I'm sure people will say about Trick or Treat. But don't give me this crap that like well then maybe uh maybe it'll be good by itself that that would probably be the bet no legendary's working on it you're you're biding your time just just be up front with us okay i'm done that's my soapbox rant for the for the moment okay <laughs> another beautiful thing about shutter is that they brought back creep show creep show now has a series and it's wonderful guys i'm really enjoying this new series by greg nicotero he is knocking out of the park being one of the uh contributors to creep show along with uh just being a huge fan at the same time uh but it's breaking records uh since it's uh september 26th premiere um 54 of all members of shutter have watched it uh episode one had more minutes streamed in its opening weekend than any other title in shutter which is pretty cool we just got these little statistics sent to us from them so it's pretty cool it's about 96 percent fresh and rotten tomatoes go check out creep show you will not regret it and i'll have more in-depth with the series uh, later in the show. As some of you know that Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines is my favorite video game of all time. Uh, the sequel, Bloodlines 2, has been pushed back uh, till early 2020, which I'm okay with. Just keep perfecting that game. I don't care. It doesn't need to come out right away. Uh, also announced was Werewolf the Apocalypse Earth Load, which I'm really, or Earth Blood, which I'm really excited about, uh, along with uh, Vampire the Masquerade Swan Song, which is going to be a Steam uh, game as well. So a lot of stuff from the World of Darkness finally coming out. This is what we've been waiting for. I'm just excited to play a werewolf immersive game where I can uh, change different uh, classes of werewolves and, and, and run with the pack and maybe ride motorcycles around the wilderness. Man, that sounds so much fun. I, I'm super excited for these games to come out next year. Uh, expect lots of streaming over on the Twitch page, twitch.tv backslash horror underscore guy. That's where you can find most of my streams each night. I try to keep it horror based. Some Overwatch gets thrown in there. I'm sorry. But lots of movies, lots of spooky shit coming soon to the stream. You've been jonesing for Left for Dead. Do you miss it? I do miss it. Steam doesn't miss it because they have other Steam account money. They don't need to make another game. Well, Dying Light 2 is adding a Left for Dead 2 mode, which means they're going to incorporate stuff from the story from Left for Dead into their game and it's just going to be a mode where four of you go around and just shoot swarms of zombies i'm i'm down for it that sounds great. i'm very excited look for that for dead by or dying like two this spring oh did i mention there's also a vampire the masquerade cauteries of new york can i come to steam very soon and december 4th december 4th yeah oh, so much so much good horror games coming out i'm excited you may have not heard about it you may have but somehow I feel like a spirit is going to haunt your toilet in the near future. That's right, Burger King is releasing their Ghost Whopper. Uh, last year they had a Dark Whopper. I think there was like a Green Zombie Whopper at one point. Now Burger King has the Ghost Whopper. If you guys listen to the Purple Stuff podcast, you know Dinosaur Dracula loves these things and saves them each year. Now he has a green, black, and white Whopper burger. That I don't know if that's safe to eat. The power... 
is invested in him. Good luck, buddy. Uh, but that's out right now to the end of Halloween. It looks like Sam Raimi's coming back to the horror genre after Drag Me to Hell. Sam Raimi uh, has been working with the uh, production company for um, various horror remakes and things, kind of like the Evil Dead stuff that had come out. His company worked on that. Um, Crawl recently came out. His company was working on that as well. I know the Grudge remake just had a trailer today drop. Uh, he's, his company's working on that. Uh, but he looks like he'll be directing a new horror film with the writers from Freddy vs. Jason on a original horror property. So that excites the hell out of me. So it's cool that his production company's working on uh, some, a lot of these horror remakes, uh, including Crawl, which is an original project, but we're also going to get something from old Sam that's... Uh, something original, especially from the something from the guys that did Freddy vs. Jason, which was one of my favorite uh, Freddy movies out of that entire series. And Jason, if you really think about it. Um, Sam's going to be at Spooky Empire this Halloween, as I will be as well. So I'm going to try, uh, try and talk to the guy. Maybe we can get a little bit more information about what this horror movie is all about. Would you like to stay in the Adams Family home for a night? I sure would. Well, Booking.com has worked with the uh, Adams Family with their new movie coming out to let you stay in the Adams Family if you're going to stay somewhere in Brooklyn, New York. This is a 19th century townhouse in Brooklyn's historic Cobble Hill neighborhood area. Uh, this is going to cost you around $101 a night uh, from October 11th through October 31st. Well, we'll say November 1st. Uh, and this is pretty cool. Well, I like the kids' bedroom. It looks a lot like Pugsley's. There's a giant bomb hanging off the top of it. Uh, obviously, um, Wednesday's at Adam's room has like a little dollhouse. It's the Adam's family house with... Um, candles and a Ouija board, a whole bunch of fun stuff, and the house just like lit, it rem just bleeds gothic. It's it's wonderful, including the polar bear rug and so much more. Check that out at Booking.com. Here's a little ditty from the 1960s from the Frantics. This is a werewolf. Even a man whose heart is pure and says his prayers at night can change to a wolf when the wolf. Bears and the full moon shining bright. I was asked to come back by the lovely folks at Universal Orlando to cover this year's Halloween Horror Nights 29 event happening from now until the beginning of November. Uh, and me and my friend Danielle came out for a few drinks, a few laughs, a few screams, and I wrote up a whole review of and, and, uh, each house and each street over at Geek.com. So type in Halloween Horror Nights over at Geek.com and you'll find all my photos and reviews. But I'm going to give you guys a little quick rundown of the houses in my readings. So Ghostbusters is a house this year. Not something super scary, but when I was a kid, Ghostbusters kind of freaked me out a little bit, especially that library scene in the beginning. Well, they do the entire first film, starting from the library, all the way through the Ghostbuster house, into the very end of the film, where you're in New York against uh, Gozar the Gazarian, uh, Slimer through the hotel, it all happens in there, and this house has some of the best effects 
that Hornets has ever pulled off with video. Uh, it's from Slimer coming down a hallway and then just kind of dipping off through the wall. Uh, to for practical effects of Slimer, to the brothers, the Scolari brothers in the prison, or the courthouse. Really cool stuff. They did a great job with this. I gave this house 5 out of 5. Yeti, Terror of the Yukon. This is uh, what you could expect. It's a bunch of uh, snow yetis uh, ripping apart uh, a camp uh, in Canada. And uh, it's, it's pretty great. I gave this house a 3.5 out of 5. These outfits look amazing on these guys. You just have to have that perfect stream. You know, when you go through a haunted house, it's kind of like a conga line. And you can kind of see scares from in front of you. And then you get there, they're in their like, little boo hole, and then it'll come out. So you have to, you have to go through and like, have that group that kind of just makes that, that scene perfect for you. Uh, Jordan Peele's Us is a house this year. This is probably my least favorite. I enjoyed the movie Us a lot. I just don't think it translates well into a house. Um, the boardwalk effects look really cool. Uh, I, I like that as part, aspect of it, although it's like once you get into what Us is, I won't spoil it for you guys, it's kind of a, a lackluster house. Tra translated into a very lackluster house. Next up, we have Stranger Things. This is covering seasons two and three of the show. Uh, this is a lot of randomness at its finest. There's so much in Stranger Things, it's hard to kind of encapsulate two seasons in one house. So it's just kind of a lot of random moments kind of thrown in. Dustin's room here, a Hawkins school there, an arcade, a Russian laboratory. Like, it all just kind of keeps going and going and going. Uh, I give this one three out of five. Rob Zombie's Hellbilly Deluxe Scare Zone. I'm a huge Rob Zombie fan, so this is a this is a treat for me. This is like living like if I was to die and, and going to purgatory or whatever, I would like this scare zone to be it. Just fucking cool ass women dancing and robot monsters and old video clips spliced playing on the walls to Demonoid Phenomenon and Thunder Kid 65. This is where I belong. <laughs> uh, it was a lot of fun. They have a living dead girl and Rob Zombie, you know, presenting her in that outfit to. See, being able to sit in Dragula and just rock out with the giant robot, it, it's its really cool. It's a cool experience. Not very scary, but just a lot of fun. Four out of five stars. Depths of Fear. This is kind of like a, um, an, an aliens underwater kind of thing. Kind of like that movie coming out soon with the girl from Twilight. Um, it is a facility that has been go uh, begun turning these like hosts into crazy hosts and then they turn into fish people they're called the mouth brooders and they come after you uh they look a little a tad cheesy in their giant costumes but it still throws some scares out i mean, I don't, I mean uh, this was kind of maybe my worst one this is 2.8 out of 5 this is original concept house Next up, we have Universal Monsters. Obviously, these guys are inked to my arm. I love these guys. Uh, this house was really cool. Um, you kind of go through a tomb that has all these cemetery uh, plots for each monster, and then you enter uh, Talbot's area where it's all Wolfman, and each area of the house is its own like labyrinth of that creature. So you go to Dr. Frankenstein's laboratory, to the mummy's crypt, uh, the Bride of Frankenstein's there, Creature, um, Quasimodo, all of them. It's really cool. I like they pay homage in, in anything that's for the Universal Monsters that Universal represents. I will be very happy with. That one got 4.3 out of 5 stars. Probably one of my favorites of this year. Um, Arachnid, which is the scare zone for the... Uh, the cyberpunky kind of feel to Horror Nights, the, the main pathway that you walk through. You can't take a bad photo in this area. It's gorgeous. Uh, neon lights everywhere, a little misty uh, laser roof is happening. Uh, props to all my lighting folk out at Universal I used to work with. Great people. Three out of five stars. My favorite house of the year, House of a Thousand Corpses. Uh, this house is balls to the wall. Uh, Rob Zombie had the house uh, earlier on, I think in like 2010, uh, maybe earlier than that, where he had a house as a corpse's house at Universal Hollywood. Then he had the Great American Nightmare, and he did that till about 2013. Uh, and now he's bringing House of the Corpses to Universal Orlando. It was really cool. I think it's also in Hollywood too. Um, very cool house. Definitely deserves to be a, a horror house. I mean, Rob Zombie got the idea of House of the Corpses while walking through a Halloween Horror Night house. So, the fact that it's a house makes 110%, and it's probably one of the best haunted houses experiences you'll ever go through. 4.5 out of 5 stars. 
Vanity Ball. This is kind of like a, um, a bad plastic surgery runway uh, fabulous show going on where surgeons are just tearing apart people in little alleyways and uh, there's a runway where there's fabulous, horribly crafted uh, makeup and plastic surgery uh, folk walking around. This is two out of five. Not that scary. Killer Clouds from Outer Space has turned from house into haunt. This one was a lot of fun. Uh, seeing all the effects of the, the, the hand puppets and the cotton candy modifications, including Clownzilla. Yes, Killer Clowns always deserve its house, and I'm happy to finally see it. That one got three out of five stars. Uh, Vikings Undead, which is a scare zone. Not trick-or-treat, but it's still really creepy. Some of the, the most creepiest, flayed, ripped-apart human beings of Undead Vikings just tearing people apart. Really cool. 3.8 out of five stars. Graveyard Games. Graveyard Games is an original haunted house that kind of feels a lot like scary stories to tell into a dark except it's its own stories about these kids uh, trespassing into a cemetery. Um, you find like, you find their bodies kind of just all the life just sucked out of them like the mummy just found them and they're all decrepit and they're holding their cell phones and you see like the FaceTime uh, faces of their parents or loved ones screaming, wondering where they're at with a like low battery sign blinks on the phone while you're looking at their decrepit body. I think this is a really creepy concept, probably cooler than like the actual characters in the house. Um, but really cool nonetheless. This is a great house. Four out of five stars. Definitely check out Graveyard Games when you're out there. Uh, last but not least, Nightingale's Blood Pit. This is a original haunted house. Um, kind of like these uh, gladiators uh, are being attacked by bloodthirsty nightingales. Which are these like demonoid type monsters ripping people apart. So the house smells like raw meat. You're just burning meat everywhere. It's pretty crazy. Uh, probably one of my favorite original houses as well. Four out of five stars. Horror Nights was great this year. They also have Academy of Villains, Alternate States, along with the Halloween Marathon, Marathon of Mayhem. Uh, check out Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to come out this year, definitely go out next year. They have a lot of tricks up their sleeve. It looks really cool. Um, I had a blast. I know Daniel had a blast. You can bet your freaking jack o' lantern booty shorts. I'll be back next year. All right, pumpkin beer reviews for this year. Obviously, pumpkin ale is my favorite go-to pumpkin ale of choice. I give this one a 3.50. Uh, this one is delicious. Dogfish Head Craft Brewery. This is a yam beer. Uh, it has the most alcohol by volume at the same time of being a nice, um, hefty uh, pumpkin beer. You don't feel too full. Uh, it, it stays mid-range, so you can have it with a meal or you can have it just, you know, chatting with friends after uh it, it's delicious i love this beer check it out isle of magruto uh do south brewing co pumpkin this is a 3.75 beer it's also a yam beer delicious stuff check that one out head of the horseman imperial pumpkin head not to be <laughs> confused with pumpkin head Head of the Horseman Imperial Pumpkin. This is from D9 Brewing Company. This one was really good. I was a big fan of this one. This is a 3.75. Uh, check that one out as well. The Great Ur Pumpkin. Uh, this is really good. This was a full four star uh, review from me. Check these guys out. This is Heavy Seas Beer that make this one. Uh, and then I'm gonna do one for you guys right now. This is Gourds Gone Wild. This is gonna be our live test right here on the show. Pumpkin Ale from Tampa Bay, right here in Florida. Hear that? It's me opening this thing. It's a tall boy too, so that's gonna be me drinking this the rest of the show. If I'm a tad tipsy or start slurring my words, you know the reason why. Here we go. <laughs> wow, so this one has a more sweet taste to it, which is kind of nice. I feel like it almost is like a candy um, but not too sweet to the point where you want to throw up afterwards. Uh, <laughs> there are some beers out there like that that are just like too sweet and they, they, they screwed it up by putting too much sugar or whatever in them. But this is good. This is a very light pumpkin taste. Uh, it is almost dangerous. I feel like I could go through a lot of these. I see now why it's a tall boy. Uh, what kind of alcohol by volume does this have here? Uh, it looks like it is a 6.0 alcohol by volume beer. Gourds Gone Wild from Tampa Bay Brewing Co. Delicious. You know what? I'm going to say four. We're giving it four stars. There you go. All right, and this is the part of the show that I like to focus on artists, people that do traditional art from beauty makeup to uh, makeup and prosthetics to 
uh, music, sculpting, you name it. If you're an artist, I want your stuff on my show. Remember, you can always contact me at hallowseve365 at gmail.com if you'd like to submit your stuff. Uh, this is stuff I found around on Instagram, and I would love to share it with you guys. Lexi Marie M A M U A Lexi Marie M U A on Instagram has an amazing creep show, creep uh, makeup that she did, where she almost looks like she's contorted her face to be the skeleton creeper from Creep Show, except it's just all makeup, really cool stuff. Uh, even has like the red veil on with her blonde hair pulled through. It just it's it's breathtaking. I really love this makeup a lot. Definitely check her out, Lexi Marie M U A. That's Lexi L E X I M A R I E M U A. Uh, next up is Sapple Sauce Six Six Six. She's an amazing X-ray. Uh, uh, makeup that she did where one side's completely like an x-ray to the other side looking uh, like her and and, and and some extras added to it along with Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas including spiders crawling her eyes she does this really cool thing where uh, she contorts parts of her face not contorts them but makes it look like they're being contorted like one recently today was one where her eyelids are being pulled down and out and her, te- her teeth are being pulled back but it's all just makeup it's, it's her teeth are painted onto her face it's crazy check this girl out she's amazing that's Sapple Sauce 666. Uh, next up is Jen X Noir. Uh, she did an amazing mermaid along with Wendy uh, from The Shining. Uh, and I know you think of, uh, you know, bulged out Wendy with, you know, like sweating and crazy. This is more like the lighter side of Wendy. But she did an amazing job with the outfit and everything. Really cool. And of course, uh, she, there's one where she's also a. Uh, a magician's assistant and her wrists are all bloody and gross and it looks really cool check her out gen x noir moving on to traditional art we have justin one alert and he has some of the most amazing uh sketchy uh vampires that i've seen her his close-up work and and etch stuff is something i've never seen i would love to see his stuff animated because it's just so uh, interesting to check out. Just you'll stay on his page for a long time. Justin One Alert. Uh, next is Narakal. N A R Y A K A L. She is an amazing ink uh, presence in the community. Uh, she does some stuff that looks like uh, creepy uh, childhood fairy tale kind of stuff. I could see an entire book being made of of these these drawings that she just does for fun for inktober why not but uh, someone employ this woman and make make her a full-time artist because she deserves it really good work check her out narakal and last but not least stephen coid l that's s-t-e-f-a-n-k-o-i-d-l his atmospherical stuff is really cool he does krampus mass as well he's a sculptor he's an artist this is some of the most detailed stuff I've ever seen, along with haunting art. I really love haunting art, the stuff that, you know, a guy walking down a road and there's just like this giant monster in the background, but that's just daily life. And it just kind of, it's art that really makes you think, you know. I really love this stuff. Check his stuff out. Stephen Coyd L, or Stephen Coyd 1, if I'm wrong, if it's not an L. <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, music, Halloween at High Noon. They're supplying all the music you hear on my show all the time. This is off their new album. Check that out as well. This just got released. Uh, Fear Candy for 2019. Really love their stuff. And, of course, HalloweenRadio.net. If you're looking for Halloween music all year round, including kids' music to oldies to everything in between, HalloweenRadio.net has a lot of good stuff. And I'm not a sponsor for them. I'm literally just telling you guys about some really cool music uh, while you're working or while you're painting or whatever you do. So those are the artists this week. Thank you guys so much for allowing me to share your stuff uh, and keep it coming. I really appreciate it. Here's a Halloween poem narrated by G.M. Danielson written by H.P. Lovecraft called Halloween in a Suburb. And after that, we get horror and TV reviews. The steeples are white in the wild moonlight and the trees of a silver glare. Past the chimney's eye see the vampires fly and the harpies of upper air that flutter and laugh and stare. For the village dead to the moon outspread never shone in the sunset's gleam but grew out of the deep that the dead years keep where the rivers of madness stream down the gulfs to a pit of dream. A chill wind weaves through the rows of sheaves in the meadows that shimmer pale, 
and comes to twine where the headstones shine and the ghouls of the churchyard wail for harvests that fly and fail. Not a breath of the strange gray gods of change that tore from the past its own can quicken this hour when a spectral power spreads sleep over the cosmic throne and loosens the vast unknown. So here again stretch the veil and plain that moons long forgotten saw and the dead leap gay in the pallid ray sprung out of the tomb's black maw to shake all the world with awe. And all that the morn shall greet forlorn the ugliness and the pest of rose where thick rise the stones and brick shall someday be with the rest and brood with the shade unblessed. Then wild in the dark let the lemurs bark and the leprous spires ascend for new and old alike in the fold of horror and death are penned for the hounds of time to rend. Well, it's no Ray Bradbury, but it'll do. <laughs> All right, on to our movie reviews. We're going to do these in order of how they were released. Candy Corn uh, came out in the end of September. It reminds me a lot of a bad Rob Zombie movie, kind of like 31. Uh, not enjoyable. Uh, it takes place in Halloween night, so you had me at that heart. You didn't have to do a lot to really impress me after that. But, man, it just it is grating to see, like, the moments from Rob Zombie's Halloween to the moments from Devil's Rejects, from with some House of Thousand Corpses into somebody else's new movie. Like, guy, find your own style, man. This is just... It's bad. It's not very good. Uh, we're going to give that two, two skulls out of five. Moving on to The Tall Grass that came out on Netflix... Uh, this is a pretty cool story. Apparently, Joe Hill and Stephen King created the story at an IHOP late at night. <laughs> uh, which is a really cool story. It's out on Netflix right now. It's, uh, you know, people getting lost in, in tall grass. And uh, I don't know if I want to go into two more or really spoil it. The, you know, the creature effects or the uh, undead effects, I guess you could say, look really good. And I think it's a solid streaming film. So check that out this spooky Halloween night. Uh, next up is... I want to say Trick. Yeah, we'll go with Trick, uh, which is based off someone's name, which is <laughs> is their name in town. Um, this is from the the director of Freddy vs. Jason and um, Drive Angry. Uh, Trick is really a, a, a balls to the wall slasher where like this guy moves fast, and when he goes around your howling party and he's slashing up people, like he no nobody can take him out. Um, though it does remind me a lot of one of the Dead by Daylight characters in the game Dead by Daylight. There's a character that wears a hoodie and a mask uh, called Legion, and he has legions of members that also wear hoodies, and they're all part of his legion and go around stabbing people at nights. Uh, so it kind of reminded me a lot of that. I'm not sure if they really took anything from that or not, but who's to say? Uh, we're going to say two and a half stars for Trick. Next up, one of my most anticipated movies of the year, Three from Hell, Rob Zombie's newest film. Uh, this has a lot to live up to. I mean, I did had an entire episode just on what this movie is going to be about. How did the Devil's Rejects live? How did the members from House of Thousand Corpses get through the events from the end of the Devil's Rejects? Well, apparently they just do. <laughs> so that's a very Rob Zombie answer. Um, no, you know, Captain Spaulding has little bits and moments here and there in the movie. I'm not going to spoil anything for you guys. Um, so it's good to see him back in a role. Uh, although this is not his last movie, there's one more coming out that he filmed a scene for where he's wearing a wig and everything. Uh, but, you know, the new member of the Firefly family, uh, Foxy, does a really good job in this film. Uh, it's paced exactly like Devil's Rejects. Um, there's little hints of House of House Corpses thrown in, like family members being brought up and things like that. Uh, but it is, uh, it's very much in vain of the Devil's Rejects with a less money. Um, but the end of the movie really kind of solidifies everything and makes it just a fun, badass movie. So if you're hanging in there, you're not feeling it, just wait. It gets good. I'm really happy to see this movie come in, uh, to the trilogy of the Firefly family. And honestly, it could go into some other movies too. So I'd like to see all these members back. Sherry Moon kicks it up a thousand notches, uh, 
you know, everybody kind of gets her crap for her performances in a lot of Rob's movies. I think she killed it in Three from Hell. Uh, and of course, Bill Mosley, always spectacular. Dee Wallace, amazing. Danny Trejo, the whole cast was great. Uh, I picked this one up. There's a special edition out at Walmart that has Foxy's shirt that says, uh, I hate disco or fuck disco or disco. Disco sucks. That's what it is, uh, which is really cool. So see if you can try and grab one of those before the season is out. Uh, next, we have Zombieland Double Tap. Uh, you know, nobody asked for a sequel, but it's here. We had that really bad Zombieland made-for-TV movie that came out a while back, <clears throat> and that was atrocious, so I'm glad that's not a thing anymore. But Zombieland Double Tap is here. Continues right out, like, ten years later after the last one. Um, the kids are feeling a little restless. Uh, Abigail wants to leave the nest. Woody Harrelson's character is really sad about it. Um... Emma Watson and uh, Eisenberg are just there. <laughs> we also get some other uh, fun little cameos here and there. Luke Wilson just plays a cameo and everything he's in these days, so get ready for a Luke, cam- Luke cameo because it happens all the time. Uh, Zombieland is actually a lot of fun, believe it or not. Uh, you know, I went in with kind of meh expectations. It has a scare zone at Halloween Horror Nights. Um, but, uh, oh, which I don't think I touched on. The, the Zombieland Scare Zone is really cool. I give that three skulls out of four. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the movie the movie was a lot of fun. I'll def- it definitely has rewatch value. In a, mo- in a world where we have a lot of sequels um, for comedies that just aren't good, like Caddyshack, Anchorman, Zoolander, Zombieland Double Tap kind of feels like it continues the story and is a lot of fun, which kind of breaks that mold of bad horror comedies. Uh, three and a half stars. Check out Zomb- Zombieland Double Tap. Gags the Clown came out, not as great as you'd think it would be, because the design for Gags looks amazing. That's two stars. I'm not even going to go into that movie. Uh, next, we have The Addams Family, the CGI movie that came out recently. Uh, it carries the vein of The Addams Family very well. I'm really excited to see uh, where they kind of go with the series. If, I would love to see them do a live action thing again, though. Like, I think this is a good precursor. They might do one or two movies in the CGI world. Uh, I think they did pretty good for what they set up for. There's not a lot of song and dances, which I appreciate for the Adams Family, of all things. That's not that type of world. Um, there's the Mamushka or whatever that they do like in the Adams Family, so that kind of works. Um, it is, it's enjoyable. If you have kids, definitely show them the Adams Family. It's a lot of fun because I'm an adult and I went by myself and I still had a good time. So check out the Adams Family. Four stars I gave it. Check out, check it out. It's really good. Uh, next up is Haunt. Haunt just hit streaming services on uh, Shutter, and this one is really cool. <clears throat> it is basically. Um, kind of a story about how, um, you know, you go to these haunts and you go in and you go out and that's it. And it's like, what if a haunt really kept you into it? And maybe their masks aren't what's the scariest thing. Maybe it's something else that's lurking beyond that. Uh, this is an Eli Roth produced horror film. Uh, and it kind of goes that, that hostile limit. And I really love that about haunt. Um, I would love to see more movies in this franchise. Uh, when I saw the trailer, I was like, I have to see this movie this year. And it, it blew me away. I really loved haunt check it out uh i believe i gave it oh my god i'm actually having to look at my own review because i don't want to like score this any less than what i gave it uh three and a half stars so yeah haunt is pretty great guys check that out uh next we have it chapter two i know now we're out of order because that came out a while ago it continues the story of it chapter one obviously um the it's a little bit more goofy here and there and the ending is kind of whatever um, there's things that haven't changed from Stephen King's uh, original writings that kind of irk me, but the overall film itself does a very w- good way of sequelizing the first film and, and kind of wrapping things in. I really love Bill Hader in this movie. Uh, I love the scenes where they do flashbacks to the kids and stuff. I'm pretty sure they do a voiceover for little Bill Hader, the, the kid from uh, Stranger Things. Uh, but uh, it was enjoyable. Uh, you know, I, I give it a three stars. I think it was pretty good. Uh, next one is the Banana Splits movie. This is a sci-fi original film. The Banana Splits, do you remember the Banana Splits? The Hanna-Barbera live action show where people dressed up in Chuck E. Cheese type costumes and ran around with kids. Well now they're, uh, I guess, what's that, what's that game called? Um, Five Nights at Freddy's? They're like robotic, uh, furries that want to come kill you. And I think that's a fun concept. I think that's really cool. Um. Sadly, it's not the best, but it's a sci-fi original movie. Two and a half stars. Check out the Banana Splits movie. Uh, I guess out on streaming now. I'm sure you can find it. And last but not least, guys, The Lighthouse. 
dude. Robert Eggers. I've been waiting for another film from him since The Witch. Uh, I saw this last night. I've been waiting to do the podcast to specifically talk about this movie to you guys. Um, it stars Robert Pattinson and William Dafoe. And let me tell you guys, these two dudes rip themselves away and, and let enter some just hostile, screwed up, fishermen lighthouse attendants and what what gets brought out is it's just something on earth i think these two guys are gonna win academy awards for what they did um it, it's a movie that you'll remember where you were when you saw it like do you remember where you were when you saw Eraserhead? like you'll same exact thing like it's just so messed up and mind-boggling and and it, it's kind of like a, a downward spiral into madness of a, a hp lovecraft story um, no real Cthulhu type stuff here, although it could open itself up very well to be one. Uh, apparently, um, Roger Ebert recently wrote about it and, and put up some innuendo and things that he saw in the movie that could kind of come out, some references that I had no idea about, so check that out as well. Um, five stars. That is my five star movie for this October. Check out The Lighthouse out in theaters now. When we get back, TV reviews. Hello, kiddies! Crypt Keeper here, Master of Ceremonies at Universal Studios, all new Halloween Horror Nights, with new haunted houses to die for. You'll make some new themes, play a scarring role in a killer show, and lots more. Don't miss the last two weekends of terror! Florida residents save! Advance tickets just $22 at Ticketmaster with a two-liter Pepsi label! Party with me at Universal's Halloween Horror Nights! You'll dig it! <laughs> Goblins, werewolves, vampires, they're not real, but he is a real nightmare. Jamie Lee Curtis, Donald Pleasance, it's the night he came home. Halloween 2, Thursday at 8 on Channel 17, parental discretion advised. Halloween doesn't have to be spooky. Not with Easter Seal Safe Halloween Coupons. The safe treat that gives treatment. Safe Halloween Coupons are good for treats at stores and restaurants. Give them to trick-or-treaters or treat yourself. Give Easter Seal Safe Halloween Coupons because Halloween should be warm and friendly. On to horror TV news, we have American Horror Story 1984, which obviously takes place in, you guessed it, 1984. It takes the Friday the 13th uh, sleepaway camp kind of vibe feel uh, for this uh, new season of the show with a little time twisty twist. I'm not going to go into it too much spoiling it for you guys. I know I keep saying that, obviously, as a non-spoiler podcast. Uh, but I will say that a lot of the characters feel like they were like created by M. Night Shyamalan. Like, I know they're not, obviously, but I'm just saying everybody has a twist. Everybody has a weird plot twisty turn that makes something happen every episode. And it's formulaic and it constantly keeps happening. And I kind of like enjoyed, I think it was Freak Show, that just kind of like played a, a, a story straight. Like what you were seeing was, was enough. Um, even in the first season of American Horror Story, they were, the, when the twist came, they were really interesting. This just feels like they're shoving it down our throat. But it, I get it for the campy feel. I'm just saying when I saw uh, Friday 13th or Sleepaway Camp in those movies, uh, th there's one big twist. Maybe. Maybe. So Sleepaway Camp, obviously, we have our one big twist. Friday 13th, the twist came here and there with different character introductions and, and, and mothers and stuff like that. But... To have like a twist every character is kind of insane, uh, and it's and it just feels like you're on a, a, a insane FX television roller coaster. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, the the gore is still there. It's still a great horror show to have on television. I still I like that people are watching it. The intros are always fun. You know, I feel like the American Horror Stories. Uh, you never want to skip the intros just because they're they're really creepy, like Coven was, uh, or they're just insanely fun, like. Uh, 1984's is uh, apparently the it, it did a uh, I don't even want to say I won't even say um, but just know that it's uh, it's 
I don't know. Calm down with the twist is all I'm saying. 1984. Okay, moving on to Creep Show on Shudder. I told you we come back to this. Let's talk Creep Show. This is obviously uh, the television remake from George Romero, Stephen King, Tom Savini's amazing Creep Show movie. Uh, this is, uh, I guess, the. So there's a second film, Creep Show 2. Then there's a third iteration film that came out. Uh, and then now there is the TV show from Greg Nicotero, uh, who is obviously a KB effects legend, onto. Uh, the walking dead and is now a producer on the walking dead you know one of the head producers uh so they got some extra cash to spend so why not give it to the amc network uh streaming service that is shutter uh and have an original story be brought out uh well not so original some of these episodes are like the monkey paw and stories we've already known or the the one with the the growing grass uh, off Stephen King in the first one. It's kind of a, re- a revamped version of that in this one, along with the original other stuff. There's a Dog Soldiers type episode, but it's not technically Dog Soldiers that stars uh, Jeffrey Combs, which is really cool. Um, and so uh, a lot of these these episodes are, are really neat. I think they're filmed really well. I, I know people say it looks cheap. I don't think it looks very cheap. I think they're just kind of following exactly what the Creep Show, uh, show was. There, it looks a lot of the... Um, bright colors in the backgrounds and like a light, little black lightning bolts kind of showing next to their faces and like slow zoom ins like that's like the comic coming to life scenes from the comic it, it should be for fans of creep show they should know that um i think it's fine and i think they can only do better it's it's done really well like i gave you guys stats earlier on so I, i'm really excited to see how far creep show can go i want season two immediately uh next up we have are you afraid of the dark the new season uh this is a revamp uh mini series uh, of Are You Afraid of the Dark? We're not recasting kids. We're only thing we're really bringing back here is the Midnight Society. Uh, but this kind of goes a little bit into the Midnight Society's past first. So I think what this is gonna be, this is my like little take, is that it's a it's a mini series. There's one creepy story surrounding all the kids that like have this Midnight Society, uh, and then maybe they v- like green light uh, a Are You Afraid of the Dark new television show, or a movie now there was a movie in the pipelines so long ago that i've been reporting on it they canned right away when i canned it i think they greenlit the, the sh- this little mini series um uh and so you know we it's it's interesting because the show's really good the the, the cast the way that they're written they, the, all the kids are really a lot of fun uh especially for you horror fans out there i feel like the, one of the kids is just like most of us uh which is great i love seeing that put into a new kids show and can kind of like talk about classic horror and stuff in a fun way um and on top of that it's just like it's really interesting and i think a lot of young teens will definitely kind of jump on and and enjoy the story especially since the creepy stuff is creepy like the that was the thing about are you afraid the dark over goosebumps uh, the creepy stuff was actually kind of terrifying um, the ghastly clown episode and, and, and a lot of the clown episodes, honestly. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think they were just more, more sinister. And so this one kind of revolves around a circus, uh, that comes to town every now and then. Um, and I won't go too much more into it, but it is, it's pretty creepy. I, I say give it a shot. I think it's three episodes. It's out on YouTube. Um, and you can watch it on... Uh, what was the other thing? Uh, I think Nickelodeon. Just watching Nickelodeon. Uh, next up, we got Castle Rock Season 2. Uh, this is uh, almost the story of Misery, uh, but the, the younger versions of Kathy Bates' character from the, the, the revamped movie of Annie Wilkes. Uh, this is Annie Wilkes' younger story, and uh, it's, it's so far pretty dark, just as you expect from, from Castle Rock. Uh, and not much has happened. I only got to the first season, but it, it has its intense moments for sure. Uh, so yeah, things are developing in Castle Rock. Look into it. And of course, The Walking Dead started its 10th season uh, a few weeks ago. And it's pretty good, guys. I know a lot of you have abandoned Walking Dead and, you know, you're over it. I get it. Like, Rick's not there. Carl's not there. What's the point, right? No, it's a really good show that's written... Um, pretty well and the effects of course are always amazing uh it has its hills and valleys literally with one with a bunch of pikes and heads on them <laughs> but it uh it i i feel like it's 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 fun keep up with it uh you know what guys i think that's it that is it for the halloween episode 
of the Every Day is Halloween podcast. I want to thank you guys so much. Uh, like, like I said, jump onto the Patreon if you can. Uh, jump onto the Etsy page if you can. And as always, make sure to follow. We're going to have an exclusive episode on the uh, Patreon page very soon. Those are going to come out regularly, just like the Every Day is Halloween podcast. They come out every month. I promise you guys, I'm not going to abandon you. Thank you guys for listening to the show. I hope you have a happy Halloween. Uh, and I'm going to let you out with a little ditty here that I think you'll all enjoy. Again, have a fun and safe, happy Halloween. I'm Horgai Keenan. Take it easy. Check us out on Instagram at Hallows Eve 365 Every day's Halloween on everything else. All right, take it easy. Later.
do is we gotta snag that tall dude. is about to begin. You have a vacancy? 12 cabins, 12 vacancies. That must be my mother. She isn't quite herself today. I will not hide in the fruit cellar. You think I'm fruity, huh? She just goes a little mad sometimes. We all go a little mad sometimes.